One four. One four. Copious amounts. We made it. 14th episode. And guess what? It's the Brooklyn style episode. And guess what? D Dot is in the house. AKA the mad rapper is in the house. Guess what? He's chilling. We're gonna make some beautiful biscuits, some salt and pepper fish. We're gonna do some hip hop themed infused food tonight for my man. Yo, get ready, don't move. Copious amounts right now, episode 14. Hey, yo, G, drop that beat. Yo, welcome back, episode 14, copious amounts. <sighs> Brooklyn's in the house. So, we gotta treat Brooklyn right. Um, we're gonna make biscuits. We got steak, we got cheese, we got eggs. Say it out loud, look at it and say it out loud, come on now. If you get it, you get it. We're gonna start. These beautiful, two T-bone steaks, okay? Two of them. What we're gonna do, take some of our salt, right on top. Nice salt for crust on your steak, no matter what steak you good. You get, make sure you have a nice crust. Fresh black pepper, all right? That's where the fun comes in, right here. Gonna take some of this garlic right on top. Spread it out on that steak, okay? That's what makes it beautiful. It's garlic. Come on. Now, we have our garlic, salt, pepper, and our T-bones. We're going to drop some references tonight. If you're not ready for the references, go do your homework. D-Dot's here. Look, some thyme right on top of here. Okay? Beautiful thyme right on top. Now, what I'm going to do is a reverse seasoning. Okay, it's not the normal seasoning. This is a reverse seasoning. So, what I'm gonna do is line my pan with olive oil, all right? We're gonna take that same seasoning, all right? And we're gonna put it on the pan because we wanna keep this beautiful presentation right on top. So, salt on the pan. What happens to that salt? Soaks up in that steak. More crush. Black pepper, I mean, absolutely beautiful. All right, now, we got that. We'll take these gorgeous T-bone steaks. We're gonna put them right on top of this pan. And what do we do to make sure we get an even coat? Take that big T-bone Rub that ish round. You know what I mean? Make sure that it gets a nice sear at the bottom. You rub that ish round. Kick in the door. Wave in the full force, four parts of this meat. One, two, three, four. T-bone, gorgeous cut. Slice right down the middle. What happens when you eat all of it? You have this T-bone. Usually you get with someone close to you. You say, hey, I got a T-bone. Both of you grab a side of it. Break it, brings you harmony in your life. Now, we got this T-bone steak. What do we need with steak? One, big black, cast iron, skillets, eggs, right here, in there, whole egg. Now, what you do is make sure you got some oil in that skillet so you don't get nothing sticking, all right? Two beautiful eggs. Three beautiful eggs, right on there, just like that. And both ones, because D-Dot's here, and Brooklyn is in the house. I'm not gonna have him come all the way down here for a chopped cheese, nah, it's not what we doing. It's a notorious sandwich we gonna do right here. So, look, every once in a while, you get a little bit of a shell in there. 
and that's where your Bruce Leroy, your Enter the Dragon come out, and you bling, and you grab it. That's what you got to do. That's how we was raised, all right? Get your Bruce Leroy on. Don't be scared of it. So, what are eggs? Black pepper, right on top. We got steaks. We got eggs. Guess what we need? A little bit of salt. Sprinkle that salt right there in that cast iron. We're not gonna mix them. We're gonna let them sit there and do what eggs do. So, we got T-bone steak, eggs, Cipher that, all right? T-bone steak, going in the oven. All the way to the back. Eggs, they don't take long. We'll put them right at the front, okay? Just like that. We'll let them sit there. Now, I got six cups, six cups, six cups, all-purpose flour. What we're gonna do right now is we're gonna say, hey, we got eggs, we got cheese, we got steak. Let's make some biscuits, all right? Homemade biscuits from your boy Al Green. You thought they named me Al Green because they was in the Navy and they was getting it popping in Guantanamo Bay, Cuba. No, it's because my mom and dad, they was fucking the Al Green, okay? That's what they was doing. Let's stay together. That's exactly what happened. Flour, three tablespoons. Baking powder, three tablespoons. Sugar, three tablespoons. Salt. Now, the difference between biscuits and other dough, your butter has to be ice cold, like literally put it in the freezer before you start making biscuits. Butter goes in. If you're vegan, use a vegan butter. Just make sure you freeze it. Two cups of butter. We want a buttery biscuit. Now, you see this? What I did is I cubed them up because I don't want big long sticks of butter because it's hard to break up. What happens now is we get our hands in here. You see this? We start breaking that butter down, all right? And just keep grabbing all that butter and keep breaking it down. What ends up happening is you get these little, small, flaky pieces, as you can see, going across the edge of my finger. You see that? That's what you want, nice little flakes. So when you go to grandma's house, you're like, grandma, like, you know, biscuits were so good. She's like, I know, baby. Because guess what? Grandma broke them up herself. She made sure that she didn't go get the Grand Royale can of biscuits. No, Grandma made you biscuits. And this is what this is. This is Grandma biscuits right here. So as you're rubbing this in, you just want to keep doing this. And what happens is the flour ends up maintaining some of that cold moisture because that's what you need to make biscuits. It has to be cold. It's not like your normal dough. If you watch copious amounts, you've seen. We made pasta. We made sushi. We made a lot. But when we made pasta, we had a nice smooth dough that sat and rested. This isn't something that has to sit and rest. You can do this. You have your kids get in here. Have your wifey get in here. Throw some flour on the butt and say, guess what? After we eat these biscuits, I'm going to get some of that biscuit. You know what I'm saying? That's what you do. It's what it is. Copious amounts. You know what I'm saying? Y'all thought it was just food. It's music, it's life, and it's the Brooklyn style episode. Guess what? We're making biscuits. So, now, this butter looks absolutely beautiful. It is breaking up. It's got nice little lumps in it, which I want, because what's gonna happen is when our biscuit rises up, you're gonna take a bite, and you're gonna get a nice small, small piece of butter in there. Once you get that small piece of butter, that's just gonna make life even better. It's just one of those things that when you taste it, it's, it's to die for. I don't even know, you know what I'm saying? You gotta be ready to die. Come on now, gotta be ready to die. Now, another important part, super important part that we got our butter and our flour mixed together. You need ice cold milk. I took my milk, two and a half cups of it, and I put it in the freezer because I want it ice cold. Let's go get this milk. So, check on baby. Ice cold milk right here, just like this, okay? Now, while this milk 
is ice cold. We let it set for like one minute because we want it to absorb with the flour and the butter and just kind of come together. We'll check on our steak. Oh, she looks real good. We'll let it sit over there. So while she's sitting over there, we'll get our hands in here. We'll get a little dirty. Now, as you can see, what happens is it'll start to eventually form a ball. And with biscuit dough, again, remember, I told you, it does not have to be smooth. It's supposed to be clumpy. It's supposed to be full of love. That's what biscuit dough is. So see that? See how that's gorgeous? When you get those layers in that biscuit, this is why you got those layers, because you're not over mixing it. You're not putting it in a food processor. You're doing it from hand, like Granny told you to do. All right, so now we got our milk, ice cold, and your dough should be cold. Your hand should be a little cold. We got this dough, looks beautiful. What are we gonna do? We're gonna get it ready. All right, out of the gloves we go. Shout out to LBJ. Boom, LeBron James the flour, and spread it out here. Why? Because we don't want our dough to stick, okay? Grab this beautiful biscuit dough. We'll get rid of Big Bertha. See you later, baby. Now, again, when I made pasta, we took a rolling pan and we rolled it out. That's not what we want to do. We want flaky biscuits. So you see these flakes in here? That's exactly what you want. And you just want to press it out until you get the size that you want. And once you get that size, you say, all right, let's get her going. So nice, beautiful biscuit dough. Ring, five inches, just like this. Cut into it. Cut into it just like that. Always has a nice little sharp edge. Nothing that's gonna cut you, but enough to cut through dough. And guess what? Boom, beautiful biscuit. One more, all right? Boom, another biscuit and another biscuit. You know, back in the day, I once got busy in a Burger King bathroom. You know, as they say, just grab her by the biscuit, you know. That, that's what we did, you know, it's hip hop, you know, sometimes you gotta get down, you know what I'm saying? Sometimes the Humpty Dance is your chance to do the hump. So, D-Dot's in the building. I said, how could I welcome him, being from Brooklyn, and do something different? We Maryland boys, let's make my boy some biscuits. So, as you see, once you don't have any more room, to cut another biscuit, you take that dough, fold it back over, just like this. Then, lay it back down. Once you lay it back down, you take your ring. If you don't got a ring, say you got a coffee cup. Say you got something just empty with a hole in it. You wanna make a little biscuit, press down on it. Now you got little biscuits, you know what I'm saying? We want big biscuits. D-Dot's here, Brooklyn's here. We're not making little biscuits. So, we'll take this, put it in Bertha. All right? Clean up. Gotta clean up. Make sure you clean up. Boom. So, beautiful biscuits right here. So, I'm gonna tell you guys something. Once you put these in the oven, they're gonna rise. 10 minutes before they come out, Pull them out, melted butter, brush the top, back in the oven, 10 minutes, hashtag GBD, golden, brown, delicious. Come on now, it's what we are, you know what I'm saying? All this matters. What's up with our steak? I mean, I'll show you what's up with her. Let's go. A uh, nice steak here, all right? Beautiful steak. Now, what I told you about the reverse sear. Now, all of our stuff that was on the bottom, 
is now going on the top and all of our stuff on the top is now going to the bottom. Now you see this marbleization, that goodness, that crunch, that's exactly what we want, all right? We're going back in. Now we're gonna go to high heat, super, super high heat. And these are skillet eggs. See that? They're cooking in, haven't lost any form, look absolutely beautiful. Now, we'll take some beautiful mozzarella, we'll put it right on top. Mozzarella is gonna help add a little bit of saltiness for our biscuit, okay? And then we'll put these right back in We'll just let that cheese melt and get a nice brownness right on top. Back in the pizza oven, we go. So, we got our biscuits done. What you do, take a sheet pan, just like this. Any kind of pan you got at the house, I know you got one. Cooking spray. We don't want olive oil, we want cooking spray. Because we just want a nice little light coating, just like that. And we take our beautiful biscuits, two inches apart, all right? Two inches apart. We got leftover biscuit, we make that later for Gadget because we know he like to come hungry, all right? So, these biscuits are gonna go in the oven. They're not gonna go in this oven. They go in your oven for 350 degrees, about 15 minutes. After that 10 minutes, you pull them out, brush them with butter, then you get beautiful, beautiful, gorgeous biscuits. So what do those biscuits look like? This is what those biscuits look like when they come back out, all right? So as you can see, we have size of my hand biscuit. Make some gravy, put it on top. Jelly. This ain't closed on Sundays, Chick-fil-A, son. This is Al Green's biscuits and steak and eggs and cheese. And I hope y'all with me. I really, really hope y'all with me. You know what I'm saying? So we got our beautiful biscuits. We'll take a couple, get them warm. Now our steak ready to go. Like absolutely ready to go. We're gonna take our steak. We're gonna rest it. And what's gonna happen? Once we flip this over, what I tell you, you're gonna get that beautiful sear at the bottom of it and at the top of it. And you see the pan is still going. We'll leave a time on there. We'll let that go right on top. Rest seven minutes. I don't know if you're excited. I'm, I'm freaking real excited. D-Dot's here. It's the Brooklyn style episode, son. Now, we have this cheese on top of this cast iron egg. I wish y'all could hear them making fun of me. They make fun of me all the time. But it's beautiful. I love it. That's what you got family for. So, what we'll do is we'll take a spoon and we'll go along the edges of this cheese and this egg because once we pull it out, we want it to lay right on that sandwich, something absolutely beautiful, all right? So, cheese, T-bone steak, eggs, Welch is great. Now, heated up some butter earlier. We'll bring her to the party. Our biscuits. Let them hang out there for a minute. We'll get a spoon ready for this jelly. Don't move. 
When you come back, we're going to plate the notorious biscuit. T-bone, cheese, eggs, Welch's grape. On a D-dot biscuit, let's go. Copious amounts, episode 14, the Brooklyn-style episode. Don't move. We're coming back. We're coming right back with my man, D-dot. The mad rapper is in the house one time. We'll be right back. Yo, yo, welcome back. Episode 14, the Brooklyn style episode. Guess what? D Dot is here. Ooh. The mad rapper is here. Ooh. With voices. Yeah. Coming out. Word. To my right. Yeah. John Blaze. Word up. Talk to him. I'm mad. Look. <laughs> you understand how good this feels? All right. Watch it's, your mouth, though. Okay. Yeah, yeah. How good this feels? It doesn't feel that good. Okay, yeah. There we go. Yeah. <laughs> Episode 14, y'all, we are back. D Dot, other known by as the Mad Rapper, uh, part of the production heavyweight team, the Hitmakers. Oh, cut! Hitman! All right, cut. <laughs> <laughs> I get a little nervous. I'm getting a little nervous. Uh, yikes! The Hitman. <laughs> <laughs> the hitman. I'm taking over. Boom, boom, boom. <laughs> Yo, you ready? Yeah. We're rolling, right? I never stop. All right, so <laughs> <laughs> we never stop rolling. It's what it is. It's copious amounts, full. Yeah. And guess what? What? Part of the hitman. Yeah. On his own thing right now. Yeah. Still doing it. Word. Brooklyn Zone is in the house, ladies and gentlemen. Without further ado, on copious amounts, episode 14, the Brooklyn style episode. I'm so proud to introduce. My brother, y'all's brother, y'all know him. D Dot, aka the Mad Rapper, in the house. What up? Tell him why you mad, son. Tell him why you mad, son. <laughs> <laughs> All right, social distance, social distance. Social distance, social distance. You know what I'm saying? That takes a village, baby. How yes, you doing? I'm blessed. How are you? Welcome, man. Thank you. Thanks Yo, you rocked me. the. Yellow hat, yeah. Emblem. I don't want to, you know. It's for it stands for Derek. It stands for Dot. It stands for defense for the Steelers. <laughs> black yeah. and yellow. Black and yellow. Black and yellow. <laughs> we in here, baby. Yo, Yo. some Redskins fans in here. A couple of Ravens fans in here. Some Redskins <laughs> and some Ravens fans in yeah, here. No way, Jose. <laughs> <laughs> what got you affiliated with the Steelers? How'd that come about? That's, that's a long story, but my pops was like a Dallas fan when I was growing up. Right. And one day I was hanging out with him. He had to babysit me, I guess you call it. <laughs> and we, and we was in Harlem and we was hanging out at some real dark type of spot. And they was in there. And they was getting high and messing with the chicks and gambling. And I was like, who is that? They was like, that's some of the Pittsburgh Steelers. Like, that's my new favorite team right there. <laughs> That's it. From that point on, that's my new favorite team. That's it. Yo, that's beautiful. Uh, one thing I want to say is, um, you recently dropped a project. Yes, Fire Sign. Um, in 2020, 2019, I think it came out. No? Yeah, but yeah, yeah, yeah. 2019. What's it like dropping a project, being you know somebody of your stature? You know, what what does that feel like in 2020? How's you know what's that process like? It's it's a blessing to be here. Like, yeah. Yeah, my big brother's here, Chucky Thompson. He just said to me, we still here. We still here. So if I'm still here and I got the ability and I still got the air, you know, I clean my joints out every day. It's, it's why not, you know. Um, now, is it the Q-tip clean? I heard it wasn't good for you. You just I clean mean, your ears yeah, out. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I clean it, you know, water, whatever I got to use. But the ears, 
the ear is still there for the youth, for the old stuff, for the new stuff. Yo, so we just keep doing it till you know we six feet under. I absolutely love that. Yeah. Um, I'm so glad to have you. Using a pizza oven too, by the way, right? The pizza oven. This is like wow. my baby. It's yeah. my Bertha. That's crazy. This is, this is my shorty. Um, I figured like I get wanted a, to get do a picture something special. Me. Yeah, you know I mean, there it is. There with, it is. The, with the pizza oven, there you know what I mean, old school style, <laughs> jail style. You know what I mean? All right, so yeah, I um, I figured, you know, coming from where you come from, well, let me roll my sleeves though. We got have a little bit of fun. I wash my hands and all that. I know, I know, I know, I know. You I got the you. biscuits. I got the biscuits. So look, this is the top of our biscuit. We will put it right yeah. there. This is the bottom of our biscuit. What yeah, we're gonna yeah. do is we're gonna do a little bit of a tribute of sorts. So I got some Welch's grape. All right. All right. So take a little bit at the bottom of the biscuit, then I'll take some. Why are you doing that? Put it right here, you mean? Right there. Yeah, there yeah, go. yeah. Why are you doing that? I'm going to cut up a few pieces of this T-bone steak. T-bone steak. You Se know? Season just right. Season just right. Here, I'm, you know, I'm not even going to front. There you go. You go for it. You tell me. I could be lying. All right. <laughs> D-Dot is here. I'm inside, so, inside, inside, inside. Is it John Blaze? I'm asking some other John Blaze meat. <laughs> <laughs> pause, pause, pause. <laughs> now, that'll go viral in a minute. Yo, let me tell you something. It's a cooking show. You know how many times we say pause on the cooking show? There's a napkin for you. Thank you, man. You know how many times we say pause on the show? I mean, it's tough. That was a flavor foul, though. It's tough. I'm going to have to sit out the next couple of plays after that one. Hey, look, 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 look. You Whoa. okay because you root for the Steelers. Yeah, all right, good. You good. You know, it could be the Giants. Pulse, you know. That's my second team, quietly. Is it your second team, quietly? I'm out from the hood, yeah. All right, so now we got Welch's grape jelly. Yes. On the bottom of this massive biscuit, all right? Now, what we're going to do is you're going to take one of these. I took some eggs. I didn't scramble them. Put them in here. Olive oil, salt, pepper. Rice, that's cheese on it too. Mozzarella right on top. All wow. Right? You see how the babies fell out? That's all right. We put them right back. You know what I mean? We yep. ain't scared. So I want you to do the same thing here. And right on top of that. So while we're building that, my I'll shit, get, my shit gonna be a little sexier than yours. Oh, you right. Can I curse on here though? My you, bad. You can do say whatever can the fuck you want. Oh, oh yeah, my bad. It's my copious bad. amounts. It is what it is. So we got a T-bone steak. Cheese, eggs. You're right. This shit is sexier. Sexy. Get that on camera, man. <laughs> so, let me ask you another oh, question. Oh, man. Let me ask you another question, all right? Yeah. Doing an album in 2020. What's that like compared to doing an album in the golden era when you was, you know, producer of the year in 1998 and you was just killing it with the team? Like, how is, how is that transfer to <laughs> now? I mean, it's almost like... It's almost like a black and white TV to color, you know what I mean? Like, really? We were, we were analog. We from the analog world, so everything took 10 times longer than it takes now. I could finish an album in eight minutes, basically in these times, and have it on the internet in eight seconds. Right. We used to have to put our records in actual envelopes, write an address on it, put a stamp on it, and mail it to somebody like a DJ Iron. Right. Or mail it to the radio stations and hope they get it. Right. Because they would put them in these slots and people would steal them. So a week later, you where my records at? I sent them to you last week. I ain't get them. So we had to remail them. Whereas now, check your email. Boom. It's on your phone. Everything's there. Everything is there. If you need it again, I can resend it. And you got history of, I sent this to you then. Yeah. I can send it to your phone. I can DM it to you. I can email it to you. So it's, it's, it's beautiful. It's like being in the Jetsons right Yo, now. I love it, so man. So the kids are blessed. And that's why we can do it always because now we can get our ideas out a lot faster. Now let me ask you, you know now I mean? that you say that, mm. do you see the golden era coming back? Nah. No? Hmm. Why not? Because it, it had its moment. It had its moment? This moment is for the kids. And I watched an interview on... Um, you know, the Breakfast Club. Yeah. And you shouted out the youngest. You were like, yo, this is their moment. Yeah. You weren't hating on them. You didn't care about the music they were making. You were just, you were proud that they were living in their moment. They, they, they blessed to be in a moment where they can 
you know, have 600 songs. Right. And drop four albums a year. They right. don't even understand how lucky they are. Right. But, I, you know, I'm not going to knock their creativity, whatever they like. They you like. paved they, the way for they that. Like it, they, lo- they like it, I love it. I well, love I mean, that, people man. paved the way for me. Right. It's, I'm just an extension, you know what I mean? I was happy to have my moment, and I'm hoping to have more moments, you know what I mean? Well, here we are having a moment. Yeah, let's have a moment. Let's do it, man. I'm so glad that you here. Let's have a moment. Is that a no, pause? No, that's a pause. We're here. Let's think about that. <laughs> oh, come on, man. The ref's got to have a conversation over here. <laughs> Yeah, I don't know. I don't think we might we be out. Right. Yeah, no we flag, right? Yeah, we got no flag. Yeah, All yeah. right, so, top of the biscuit. Yeah. Right on top of here. And what I, you know, I made the egg, like, overly dumb on purpose mm. because... Yeah, now that's crazy. It's, 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 it's like, it is crazy. So, I have some, some butter over here somewhere. I don't know where it's at, but I don't even care no more. It don't even matter. You know what? What are we looking for? We was looking for the butter. I was going to sprinkle a little butter on okay. top, but we don't need no butter. Yeah. So, guess what? What? I'm going to take this. Yeah. Press down just a little bit cut right into the half of that and if everybody gets it it is the t-bone steak cheese eggs and welch's grape biscuit yeah come on so yeah you don't mind nah go ahead get All busy right, let's go so we're gonna cut right down oh. into that oh i mean it's, it's gonna all right it's all right. it's all right it's all right i mean i figured like if big was at home and he was making a sandwich it's not gonna look pretty it's, it's a big sandwich. Yeah, it is a big sandwich. Ladies and gentlemen, the Notorious Biscuit. Yeah. I got Dida here. We're having fun. Cheers, brother. Cheers. Cheers. See? We did it again. We just touched meats. <laughs> See? Whoa, whoa, whoa. See? Whoa. Yeah, we throwing the flag on that one right there. But after that, we put it in our mouth. How bad is that? We touch meats and then put it in our mouth. It's extra pauses. This is, pauses. This is going to be a crazy episode. <laughs> Yo, man. All honesty, man. Come on. Mm-hmm. That's good. It's good. It's good. Yo, when your niggas get to being like, mm, zom, 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 you know it's that shit. Same way when they make the ugly face when you put that beat on. Right? Hold on, man. These biscuits are sticks, man. You have it. <laughs> All right. Wild combo. My shit is like. <laughs> <laughs> All right, look. Look. I'm going to make us a drink. Because obviously, I knew we was making biscuits. Eat, you know, enjoy. I'm going to walk us through this real quick. But enjoy the biscuit, and I'm going to ask you a couple questions. Take small bites, son. Small bites. That doesn't look like a small bite, son. Oh. I'm telling you. <laughs> Come on. It's just flags of all Pen- <laughs> penalty skill. Penalty skill. Look, DDOT's here. We got a freaking notorious biscuit. I figure I'll make us something to drink because I made the Popeyes like dumb out of biscuits, you know? So, I'm gonna put some mint in here. Some cucumber, all right? Something help us get our palate open. Some lime juice, all right? Some agave, nectar, simple syrup, all right? And some fresh ginger. Now, we'll mix this. And we're not gonna muddle it. We're just gonna mix it because a lot of these flavors are gonna come out when we go to finish building it. And the lime juice is gonna help extract some of that goodness and all of these. Now, I'm gonna add some ice on top of this, okay? All the way to the top. Boom. Heard you was a ginger beer fan. Love it. My man don't drink. Don't think because you don't indulge in cocktails, you can't come on copious amounts. We make mocktails. Look, now, we're gonna give a nice little stir to this. Just like that. All right. Now, while we're doing this, real quick question. Who is your favorite artist to work with? I got to know. I, I know it's a, it's a long list. You have a catalog deep, deep. Going in, thinking back, now D-Dot in 2020, working with an artist. Who was your favorite one? Who was it? Hmm. I just think I'll have one favorite. Okay. Um, 
I enjoyed the artists that enjoyed what they was doing. Okay. Um, so if they was in there and happy to be there, i.e. like, you know, you can hear in the music to me. What my ear hears, I can tell who's in the studio having fun. Yeah. And who's in the studio working. Okay. So you can hear Big was having fun. Love working with Big. Love working with Big. You can hear Mace was just enjoying himself. Yeah. So I love working with Big. Um, I love working with Mary. Um, I love working with me. I'm the best. I'm the funnest person I know. For sure. For sure. That's why when you did your album, everybody showed up. Yeah. The entire camp showed up in 2000 and was like, no, we're jumping on this. And what's crazy is, you know, not to be, uh, what's the word? Like, I'm usually a humble dude, but, you know, I'm kind of nice. That is nice. No, I'm nice. How nice? You know what I'm saying? How nice? No, meaning like, you know, like, I started off as a rapper. Right. So they showed love, but they also knew that they were up, we were going to dance a little bit. Now, it, how, it wasn't going to be easy. It wasn't just going to be a cakewalk. So you know what I mean? in the studio with the greats, mm -hmm. is there a competitiveness? Oh, absolutely. Now, why is that competitiveness there? Because everybody wants their shine or it's like, I want to put the best product forward. Which, which one is it? Or um, is it both? I think it's a combination of both. But hip hop, you know, from from when I was a youth, has always been competitive. And, you know, really just you want to bust somebody ass on it you want to be the verse that stands out you want to right. you want people singing your verse when the song come on right you want shots in the air you want the dj rewinding your part right you know what i mean you want girls you know all that you know what i mean so yeah it's, it's, it's competition so out of all of that competition mm. when was the time that you like just stood out in the room and they was like yo right now d dot he takes the cake when, when was that time what did that feel like Every time? Because mm -hmm. you're the nicest nigga out? I no, know no, like no, 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 no. I'm saying, like, there's a time and a place for everything. I knew when to be a student. I knew when to be a teacher. Okay. There was times where I had to be in charge. Right. And there was times where I had to just shut up and listen. Right. There were times when, you know, my artistry had to take a back seat to business. Right. And then there was a time when my artistry could just flow, or, they, or the other artists, their artistry could flow. Yeah. So it's, it's not really a moment where I'm in there and I'm swinging the big stick. Right. It's, it's all about the ultimate goal. We and the ultimate that, goal is putting hit, out a good hit, record. Hit record, make some money. Yeah. As my man Denzel said, everybody go home, drink some apple cider, eat some pumpkin pie. You know what I mean? Yeah. And be happy and try to make history. Like, my goal in life was to try to make things that far outlast me. So when I'm dead and gone, I'm not. You know what I mean? Yo, that's beautiful. Um, round of applause for that right there. So, June dropping, baby! Let's go. So, I, I took some cucumbers, rolled them super thin, rolled them up in here. Because, like making a hit record, your garnish game's got to be nice. You know what I'm saying? You just can't present it. But then you put some cucumbers in, in the thing earlier? Yes. Mm -hmm. okay. So you see how I'm combining the two flavors. They say never garnish nothing that's not inside of the cocktail. Mm. Because why is it there? So we have that there. And then what we'll do is take some of this mint. And I like to go to the top. Keep rising to the top. And here is the virgin mocktail. Shout out to everybody who knows this, but I call this the keep rising to the top All right. cocktail. Because you here, you still working, we here. Yo, let's keep rising Salud. to the top. Salud. Salud. Yo, Brooklyn style episode, DDOT's here. Don't move, coming right back. We're making salt and pepper fish. Cantonese Great. dish, That's but crazy. we're gonna infuse it with a little bit of American fun. We're going to talk. We're going to ask some more questions. Don't move. Copious amounts. Episode 14. I'm going to need an after dinner mint before the uh, fish, though. <laughs> clear, Got up, you. clear up some space. You Cheers, know what I'm saying? brother. Cheers. Coming right back. Copious amounts. Love. I love you, man. I love you, too, man. Good seeing you. Stay healthy and all that, man. Stay safe. Tell the fam I said what up. Chief 
So we ain't gonna be able to use none of that, is what you're saying? I'm gonna I'm test up over there, but. I'm to get Doc, Doc today's pay, brother. I need her in all my audiences. If you could just put her in the studio for me, my shit, I just feel a lot more confident. <laughs> yeah, just because if I do something and she laughs, I'll be like, I'm done, man. Y'all can make me do more. She laughed. We need more, D. She just laughed. It was good. <clears throat> I am, but they want me directing. Like, have a good time, D. <laughs> Are they rolling? Both cameras are on? Yeah, do we need to do a check? Yeah. A mic check? One, two, one, two? Welcome back to Copious Amounts. I'm your host. See, that's just... What, what did I do again? What was it? Um, I think you said fuck Copious Amounts. And you said you just technical difficulties. You yeah. got to take a Oh, we got that already, though. We did all that, right? All right, yo, check this out. <laughs> he didn't get that. <laughs> Welcome back, fuck copious amounts. <laughs> you want that as the mad rapper, though, right? Yeah, it's hard. It's hard. No, it's hard. Come on, son. Cause it's late. <clears throat> it's late. I got that Barry White shit going on. You know what I mean? So, it's late. See what I'm saying? I'm getting laughs and all that. This is good right here. You don't need to cut nothing. All right, yo, check this out. <clears throat> Fuck copious amounts. <laughs> Fuck all this shit, man. I'm doing another fucking cooking show, man. I'm gonna do my own cooking show, man. We just gonna take flour and throw it in there. <laughs> copious amounts, baby. Yo, welcome back. Copious amounts. You heard the intro. You saw the flour spill everywhere. D Dot, Brooklyn's on, in the building. We here. We here. Yo, so this is what we're gonna do. We're gonna make some salt and pepper, Cantonese, red snapper, beautiful fish. Beautiful. I mean, gorgeous, smooth on the outside, a little rough on the inside. You know, we here. So, we gotta do a few things. One, we gotta make a spicy mayo. Spicy mayo. That's gonna be our bottom, you know, garnish. We got salt and pepper seasoning. That's gonna be our top garnish. So. I'm gonna have you get started on that, if you're cool with that. I'm ready. While you're doing that, you know, I ask you some questions. So, yeah. I got some olive oil mayo. I like to use the olive oil mayo, it's a lot healthier so for I us. take this out? Or leave yeah, it you can take this out, All I got right. this. Go ahead and dump that in there. The whole thing? The whole thing. So, you talked about artists. Yeah. You talked about who you like working with. Yeah. I wanna know from your perspective, especially, you know, in the game and coming, you know, Decades now, you've been in the game. This right here dumped this whole thing in? No, 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 I got you, I got you, I got you. Speed and slow down. No, it's cool, it's cool, it's cool. One teaspoon, one teaspoon, one teaspoon. Slow down. Right. Yo, bucket list artist, who would it be? Wow. Uh, I know, it's, it's. Bucket list artist. Hmm. It's a lot of them I like. Really? All right, give me like three of them off top. Because you work with some greats. And let's, let's talk about the greats you work with. And you would know better than I would. So run them down. Let them know who, you know. Well, first, let me ask you the first question. All right. I, I like to one day collab with Dr. Dre. Okay. I think for history purposes, that could be incredible. Dr. Dre. But you work with Eminem. Yes. You guys in the same studio 50%. together? Yeah, absolutely. And it's beautiful. 50. Yeah, I'm a little over there. We, I want to talk about 50 Snoop. soon. Never, Snoop. Snoop, yeah, but never. Dre, so that's, that's a bucket so list. So Dre is a bucket list. Yeah. Now do you guys go in and like we'll produce it out? Well, I don't know, figure it out, it's just a bucket list. You know, we, when I get there, we figure it out, but uh, that's a collab of production that I think could be special. Yeah? Um, yeah. Um, hmm. All right, so? Rihanna. Rihanna? Why Rihanna? She's just sexy. <laughs> <laughs> I feel that. For no other reason. I feel that. No, she just happens to be the baddest artist that's out. So I love Rihanna. Um, I've met Beyonce. I've been in the same room with Beyonce. That, that could be incredible um, to do. Um, now you work with her husband. Oh, absolutely. Being oh, so, so your second question was, so Biggie, Jay, 50 
50 Cent, Little Big Kim. Big E, J, 50 Cent, Little Mary Kim. J. Mary J. Blige. Whitney Houston. Hold on, time out, time out, time out, time out. Yeah. Whitney Houston? Yeah, I did a remix for Whitney Houston. Yeah? Yeah, me and Ron Lawrence. Uh, now y'all got the vocals clean and just... Yeah. Now Whitney's like, vocals, like, clean, what's... How many layers is that? Is it, like, dumb layers or, like... Yeah, it was dumb layers. Yeah? But it was, you know, crystal. You know, she was the pristine perfection. You know, it was... You couldn't do nothing to it. The only thing we could do was dirty it up. Right. You know what Because that's what we do. We Well, our remix was a little hood, so we had to dirty it up just a little bit. Right. Yeah. Um, Whitney Houston remix. Probably missing some people, but I work with a lot of people like Jay Z, LL Cool J. Yeah. Various. Yeah, I work with some. So, greats. out of those two, this is what we do. Like, let's go ahead and start whipping this up real quick. Um, I gotta ask you, um, the difference between working with Jay and working with Big. Was it, you know, I, they're both not writers. They both go in the studio, come off the top, figure it out in their head, and go for it. Is that true? Is that something you witnessed? Absolutely. And what is it like to witness that versus the other rappers you work with? Um, I mean, I, I don't, every artist has their own way of doing it. For me, I, I'm also the same, like I don't really use paper, so it allows, to, for me, it just, and I'm sure for them, it allowed more freedom to not worry about words, so to speak. You're more worried about being an instrument in the music based on your melody. Once you get your, 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 your pocket inside that beat, the words are just gonna, they're gonna come. It's like singing Happy Birthday or the ABCs. Right, right, you right. Oh, and it's in your head, so you can stylize it any way you want. You know, so. so making hit records, <clears throat> um, what's it like to make a hit record? What is that process like, start to finish? Well, for I don't you. know what the process is to make a hit record. I know what it is to make a record. If it becomes a hit, you're lucky. But, you know, from start to finish, for me, it was first hearing the music. The music got to give me goosebumps. Yeah. You know, that's for me. Right. And then once we hear the music, then it's what story is the music telling you? Right. Is it the writer or the artist? Right. What color, what color are you seeing? You know, like you're seeing bright colors, you're seeing dark colors. Right. You're seeing fuchsia. You know what I mean? Like, right. And then from there, the, the, the process goes from that point. It's the vibe then takes its form. And you may make a record and pull it back. And say, eh, you can capture it. Or you may hit it on the first one. You never know. It's, you know that's, that's the beauty of making records. The studio is like your sanctuary. You get to go in there and just create, 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 unabashed. And be yourself. In most cases, yeah. Now, <laughs> in most cases, yeah, yeah. I get that. Yeah. Now, let me ask you another question because this goes outside of D Dot to you have two aliases, one being super producer, one being the mad rapper. And the mad rapper, I mean, I heard you on an interlude on Benny the Butcher's album, right. and I was like, yo, like. Here's my man out here still creating art because I think the those interludes are art because you're almost on your Eddie Murphy-ish <laughs> and playing different characters to portray a skit on an album where it's visually you can see it. Right. Um, how did what inspired that? How did that come about? Shout out to Benny. First of all, yeah. shout out to Benny. Yo, to Benny, we love you. Good looking. Glad to see he's healthy. Yeah. Um, came about because of the East, the Mad Rapper came about because of the East Coast, West Coast beef. Okay. Um, we were pretty much more reactionary than anything. So, one day we were sitting in the studio, and back in the days when videos came on, it was like a big announcement. You know, the time it was coming on, they, the people would call you and say your video is about to play at three or five or premiere at this. So the interns came running inside the studio telling us that that Fro's new video was about to premiere, two box new video. And it was a video for Hit Him Up. So all of us in the studio seeing it for the first time. Now who's in the studio at that point? Junior Mafia, Big, myself, Buff, Bad uh -huh. Boy people. And we just blown away. 
So of course our first reaction is, you know, not good. Right. <laughs> so, but... What's Big's reaction at that point? Because I know he was close to Pop. Well, if we're in disbelief at this point, because we can't believe the, the show, they took the show on the road like this, you know what I mean? Right. So, everybody, you know, we start rolling up and drinking and figuring it out and fuck this person and fuck that, we gonna do this, we gonna do that. Right. And I just went out of the room and I just thought about it and I was like, you know, the best way you can sometimes get at people is just kind of make fun of them. And that's what I thought I'd do. But then when I got in the booth, I was like, ah, this ain't really making fun of them. Let me just make a general stick. So I grabbed Trevor Jones, who was really, that's his real name, Trevor Jones. I grabbed Shay. She was really the front desk person. Trevor was the studio manager. He really talked like that, so that's why I did it, because every day I come in, he'd say, good morning, how are you? And I'd just laugh. <laughs> and one day, I would get your in loop. And Shay, God bless him, he was one of the coolest people. What's up, Derek, how are you? And she's still gone. She sounded real, you know, like what I needed. So it became three of us, that's how the skit came up. So as a producer, you were finding talent right in front of you. Sometimes, yeah. With everything that you deal with, with everything, everyday life. Right, use what you got. So, starting from them three, to now taking that show on the road and having to go do skits, doing them now in 2020 versus, you know, Biggie's album. Like, is it fun still? Like, Absolutely. what's your process? Do you write it out? Is it, you just go in and straight off the top, like, roll up. Roll up, <laughs> roll up, and, and just, just go, go in. Yeah, I mean, I, as long as they, as long as they give me some, as long as I have some, some items, some, 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 some things that I can look at and, and right. you know, like Griselda. I mean, that just was. I mean, that shit was just sitting there. Like, come on. Yeah, it was <laughs> perfect. It was perfect. Right? You know I mean, I mean? like you, you, you had the wrestling reference yeah. because obviously they're big, re right. huge wrestling right. fans. So you play off a of little, little things like that. A bit of everything. You know, like I didn't do the Mad Rapper skit to Biggie until after the Hypnotize video. Right. So I, I wasn't at the particular video because I didn't really like doing videos back then. The process was too long for me. Right. So when they came back and showed it to me, that shit was easy. Okay, wait a Driving the car backwards, like right. we just, <laughs> it was just like we just we just over the top. So as a right. rapper, that was like, oh man, I got too much ammunition. That was just too much. Okay, so leaving them, yeah, and going to do your own thing. Mm -hmm. What you I know, gotta do? You need me to do I got something? you. I got you. I, I got like you. I ain't doing that. Right? No, no, no. You good. You good. You good. You good. You good. Yeah. This is um some jalapenos, some chives, one teaspoon of this, all of this is sesame oil. It's right. gorgeous. So. Yeah. We can just go ahead and pour all that in there. Right. And while you're doing that, I'll get our fish, which almost looks perfect, out of this grease. What was I'm, the question? I'm sorry. You know what? It's okay. Look, yeah. let's let's get back to some food. Let's get some <laughs> let's get some jalapenos in here. How, how much? The whole thing? The whole thing. Hold really? in the jalapenos, yes, right. sir. Spanish? Yes. No. Oh, okay. I was born in Cuba though. Oh, okay, cool. My parents was in the Navy. Okay. Uh Chives, whole thing. Whole thing. Yes. Cut them on a diagonal. Garlic, two teaspoons. And same thing with this whisk. Let's go ahead and whisk that as fast as you can, like real fast, because we want those flavors to come together. 1998. Yeah. I mean, I graduated in 97 from high school, and I thought 97, 98 were the greatest years. 1998, you win. Producer of the year. I did, didn't I? Yeah, I did. Now, yeah. in a year like 98, let's talk about some of the hip hop that was out in 98 yeah. and some of the producers you beat. Oh, wow. Damn, that's smoke, man. It's like it's a lot of smoke. No, 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 no. I'm just saying. Like memory. memory. I'm, just, I'm just saying. You gotta ask DJ Iron. He might have. <laughs> we he, don't he have probably to run over eleven names for you right now. We don't now. have to necessarily name them, but in the in the company. Of I mean, I was in the company of greatness back then. I mean, there was producers like you know, obviously there was the Dr. Dre's and the the large professors and the Pete Rocks and the DJ Premiers and the Trap Masters and 
you know, it, I, I'm assuming what '98, so it was like the Just Blazes, and right? You know, Kanye was just coming up, and it was Havoc, and you know, some of my favorite guys. You know what I mean? Um, Pharrell and these guys were around. You know what I mean? It was Timberland. It was the era for a lot of us. Yeah, I was happy to be here. So be there. The How to Rob record. Can we talk about it? Yeah. I'm, I want to ask one question, and it's it's this important. Ain't serious. <laughs> <laughs> Yo, did you catch any flack from the streets as a producer putting that album out? Yeah. None. Not from the streets, from the industry, people was mad. Really? Missy was mad at me. Really? Yeah, Missy was mad at him too. Fifty called me. I mean, um, Jay Z. You know. He was a little mad. He called me up from Hot 97 Live with Angie Martinez. It was like, you know, I got to spank your man. And that's when he went to did the concert and said, I'm about to dial over the fuck 50, 50 cent. cent. Right, right, yeah. right, right, right. Um, you know, uh, uh, Pun was upset. God bless the dead. Rest in peace, Pun. Yeah. My response to everybody was, yo, but did you like the record? And what they say? Absolutely, they loved it. They loved I mean, the I had record, right? Calling me up, asking me why they didn't get this. Why you ain't this me, yo? Really? I mean, he literally was like, I'll, you know, yeah, punch yeah. Rizzo with these pointy ass ring, you yeah, know, yeah, like yeah. he went in. I mean, he went all the way in. Yeah, if, the, if yeah, he, we, we, once, once the record came out, all that was done. Now, look where, look where, look where everybody is now. Now, here, I'm going to get this rice from back here. Of course, I'm going to make some rice for you, you here, you family. Right, yeah, yeah, we um, need that. I'll put some cilantro in it, all some right. chives, some green all onions right. in it. We're going to let it rest, and we're going to get plated up. Yeah. Before we get plated up, I don't want it to be too hot, so we'll wait a quick second. Yeah. Um, we got a spicy mayo. Yeah. Our salt and pepper sauce. Gotcha. Y'all, look. d -Dot, Salt and pepper. Shout out to Spinderella. <laughs> Come on, now. Here it is. I did a good job. Come on, son. I love now, it. Now, this is what I like to do. Yeah. Is take a little spoon. And don't get a lot of it. You grab one of those spoons over there and just get a little bit. And that way we know if it needs a little bit of salt. Always important to taste your food. I think salt for sure, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Right? Yeah. Some salt. The pepper comes from the jalapeno. You feel that? Definitely. Now, I'll take those spoons. Go ahead. We can mix up just a little bit more. All right, so. Because we're talking about food, because D-Dot's here, what's your favorite food, my man? What, what is it? What's your go-to? Is it pizza? You in Brooklyn? My go-to is arroz con pollo. Oh, that's chicken and rice, if y'all don't know. But I like everything. I love Italian food. Yeah. I love West Indian food. I love Chinese food. Um, I don't eat pork. I rarely do beef, so today, you know, it was a good beef day, but I probably won't do beef for a few months. And that's fine. Yeah. Your parents, um, if I'm not mistaken, your dad, black? My father, my, yes. I have and two fathers. My, my real father is black. He just passed away in February. And my, rest in peace. And my other father is Jeff. He's black. And my mother's Puerto Rican. Puerto Rican. Yeah. Growing up in a household, Puerto Rican. Yeah. Soul food. Yeah. What does that look like? Like is right dad now. cooking? No, mm -mm. Dad, ain't, dad ain't there. Just he ain't there. Yeah, you and mom. Yeah, you gotta listen to ghetto. You gotta listen to ghetto. I'm gonna listen to ghetto. <laughs> <laughs> I'm gonna yeah, listen nah. to ghetto. It's just me and mom's and the soul food, the Spanish food. But you know, we was kind of broke, so sometimes it was tuna fish on a on a better salad with some salt and pepper. She make it look all pretty, but right. you know, that's all it was. You know what I mean? So, right. You know where I'm from, Fenimore Street. Shout out to all my peoples in Brooklyn. Um, I grew up in East Flatbush, Brooklyn. Now let me ask you a question. Out of the entire New York City, Brooklyn MCs seem to have a stature about them. Mm -hmm. um, I look at most, mm -hmm. I look at Biggie, I look at all the greats that come, you know, no disrespect to Queens, Queens has, no, you no. know, just as much, but yeah, yeah. for some reason when you come out of Brooklyn, there's a Buster, certain a edge about you that just happens. Why is that edge, where's that edge come from? Is it the streets of Brooklyn? Is it the, you know, the background? What, what is it? I think it's a combination of it all. I mean, Brooklyn is just legendary. You know, we just carrying the torch, but it's cement. It's a lot of cement. Yeah. And it's hard to stay soft in cement. Right. You know what I'm saying? But in that cement, roses grow out of concrete. And you're a rose that grew out of concrete. Thank you. And you're here with me. Yeah, sir. On copious amounts. D-Dot. Yeah. Yo, brother. 
Let's let's play some food. Let's have some fun. All right. So we here. Copious amounts. Damn it. D dots here. So this is what we're gonna do. I'm gonna take some of this mayo. You're gonna do the same thing I'm gonna do. All right. Mm -hmm. So we're just gonna put a dollop right there. All right. Okay. A what? A dollop. Dollop. Dollops. Right. All right. Put another dollop on there. Two dollops. Two dollops. Right. All right. And then we're gonna take our spoon and go to the left side or right side of this dollop, and then we're just gonna do just like that. That makes sense? Let's go, baby. You back I change the five dollops? Yo, <laughs> I need two dollops, son. Two dollops with two Lucy's. Um, why are you doing the dollops? Advice in 2020 to give to young artists. What do you say to them right now? Run! Run. <laughs> Look at that. Shit is knocking your shit out the box. I win. <laughs> It's beautiful. It's beautiful. It's beautiful. Now, um, no, so what we'll do My advice is, to the young artists We'll, is, we'll clean is, up right here. Go ahead. Is, Talk is, to them. You know, study what was before you. That's the best lesson I could tell you. You know what I mean? Like, and when you say that, you mean, I'm going to grab two of these spoons. There's one for you? I mean, the good thing about life, sometimes it shows you what not to do. You know what I'm saying? So, mm -hmm. at the minimum, they can see a lot of things of what not to do. You can't tell them what to do. We can tell them what not to do. But you can know not to put your hand in the fire because it's hot. Right. You know what I'm saying? Like, that's what not to do. You know right. what I'm saying? So, shit like that. I'm, I'm, I'm you packing the rice like that? Just like this. It's like a little icy, like? Packing the mac in the back of the hat. Little, little, little pudding cup? Yeah, and if you tilt it, you can get a lot more in there. Ah, uh, yeah. Up. Uh, see, I'm spilling this shit. It's all good. Yeah, just like that. Take your time. And then what I you get to the top. Like I'm hungry. That way I get that get, shit in there. <laughs> <laughs> and just get to the top and just press down on the bottom of your spoon as much as you can get in there. It's perfect. All right. So, D Dot in the building, dropping jewels. All right. Let's do this. Let's get plated up. All right. So, what we're we going to do. All right. Now that we have this here, we're going to take it, put it down just like that. So, just make sure you don't have as much rice fall out and just beautiful. Now, very slowly, just gonna lift that cup up, just like that. Look at that, now we got a nice little tower. Boom. So, we got a beautiful fish here, all right? So I'm gonna show you what to do with the fish. We'll take our smallest piece, we'll put it right there. My tower is, my tower is leaning. Right here, it's okay. And then we'll take another piece, and we'll put it right there, just like that. Go for it. And if your tower's leaning, that's what makes this beautiful, is that it's not always gonna be perfect. But guess what, it's gonna be good, it's gonna be delicious, it's gonna be the same way your mom's made that tuna fish. And it tasted a lot better because she put love into it. Here we are, we got love in our food, all right? We got love in our food. It's the truth. It's a pause. Pause. All right, so. That's a pause too? I'm gonna sit the rest of the plays out after this. What are we doing? All right, so this black sesame seeds. We're just gonna toss them right on top of this rice, just like that. And what's that do? It gives it a nice little pop in the rice because it's a Cantonese dish. Okay. And they always put sesame seeds on top of their shit. I don't know why, but that's what we're doing today. Okay. All right? Now, last but not least, is our salt and pepper sauce. So remember, we got chives, jalapenos, garlic, sesame oil. And we're just gonna take these and we're gonna plate it right on top of our fish. And we're gonna let it kind of fall where it may. We're okay with that. Towards the front is always a little bit better. Then we'll take a little bit more and we'll put it right there on the side, just like that. Go for it. D-Dot, yes, 2021. 2021. No COVID. No COVID. COVID. How you been holding up during COVID? Been all right, you know. Yeah. Staying afloat, you know what I'm saying? Survive a little fitness, baby. I love it. Uh, your mental health, how important? It's real important, man. What do you tell your brothers when they call you? I'll take that. Um, it's hard, you know, black men, we keep a lot of stuff inside. You know what I mean? We don't really express ourselves well, so. I try to talk to them in the most simplest terms. 
by using everyday life situations that we experience. So my most common thing I say to my brothers is, you know, when we get on the plane, we store this in a, whatever they call it, the flight attendants is going through their motions, they tell you, you know, in case of emergency, you gotta put your mask on first before you can help anybody else. So that's really what I tell my people that are going through stress. You know, so sometimes you gotta breathe. Yeah. I just can't help nobody until I'm breathing. Right. If I ain't breathing, then I can't help. You know, my shorty, she grabs me sometimes and she's like, yo, just take a deep breath and breathe. And I noticed like after like the third one, I'm right back to where I need to be. I'm grounded. So like, that's beautiful to hear. Um, I put some ginger on here, uh, some pickled ginger. We got our salt and pepper, our rice. Um, what we'll do is we'll take a little pinch of salt. Everybody likes to salt bay it and come from up here. You do what you want. I just like to put a little bit on top of the fish, some on the mayo, a little bit on the rice. Left-handed? I am left-handed. This is my favorite part. We take our lime. Let's call it the copious amount squeeze. Once we put the lime on there, uh, the same way if you pick up a knife, if you blood run down a knife, opposite happens. And because we have beautiful red snapper fish, we'll let that juice run down that knife. You're gonna do the same thing. I'll squeeze it like that. And boom. Yep, now hold it up, way up, even some more. Well, actually, the knife. Let's go. Right there. Yeah, right there. Boom. D-Dot in the building, y'all. Look at him plating up. Make some noise for the kid one time. Let's go. That's beautiful. Look, so we have salt and pepper fish, rice, cilantro, a little bit of onions, spicy mayo, more salt and pepper sauce. Yo, we here. Let's grab a fork. Let's get busy. You ready? One fork for you. What I like to do is come over to like this side, get a little piece of fish. And when you get your little piece of fish like that, take it, some in that mayo, some of that salt and pepper sauce, a little bit of that rice. Boom, just like that. Man, that tastes pretty good. Yo, go for it. It's our plates. We all eating. Mm. What do you think? Delicious. Not bad, right? Delicious and spicy. Um, when you were coming to copious amounts, you know, usually I get to talk to the artists. I get to, you know, get in depth with them. And you came in and you showed so much love. You recognized me right away. We hit it off. I just want to say thank you, man. Um, I wish I had a million roses that I could present to you oh, right now man, because you, like, you deserve your roses. Uh, Gadget and I have been working on this platform for a long time. To have someone here of your stature come down all the way from Brooklyn, especially at a time like this. I just want to say thank you. Uh, G, thank you. He told me y'all been kicking it for a minute now. So glad to have you here. Um, social media handles, everything, shout them out, let them know right now. All right, we're gonna have a conversation about Gadget later on, all right? That's fine, that's fine. All right, cool. That's fine. <laughs> <laughs> Just behind the scenes, all right? Yo, it's, it's, it's cool, it's cool, it's cool. Copious amounts of conversations <clears throat> behind the scenes. Ladies and gentlemen, I goes by the name of the legendary. D-Dot, Mad Rapper, The Extraordinaire. No. Come on. Ladies and gentlemen, I go by the name of the legendary, the extraordinary, and the very, very necessary Derek D. Dot Angeletti. Chilling with my man Al Green. Copious amounts. Thanks for having me. Coming to a network near you very soon. Near you. One last question. One last question. One last question before we cut. If I Damn, son, that was a hard outro. <laughs> son. Like, I, swear, son. I have my outro going. Oh, man. If I got a holler at Revolt TV, you got me? Revolt? Maybe. No? We still rolling? Hey, we out of here. Copious and Mouse yeah, yeah, Four. <laughs> episode 14. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Brooklyn's in the house. Brooklyn Thank y'all for tuning episode. in. Yo, you check them out. Got projects. Still banging out beats. 
Give my man his roses, hit him up, get some real beats, learn how to make a hit record. You s Vibrate High, Suzanne Christine, out now, Crazy Cat. Let's go. Yeah. Shout out. One time, copious amounts. Kamba, copiousamounts.tv, at copiousamounts, everything, Instagram, Twitter, social media. Just Fuck look it up. <laughs> <laughs> Copious amounts. We are fools. Peace out. <laughs>